What's up, YouTubers? So today I got an interesting job for us to tackle. So on this uh, rollback tow truck, this apparently is supposed to be like that and straight across. And you can see this is bent up, same thing on the other side. And then the whole bottom's like cut off. Now, I looked at this and I'm not exactly sure, to be honest, what the hell's going on here. I have a hard time believing that someone would have like been dragging this down the freeway for 500 miles to wear this completely, you know, the tube, wear it out like that and bend it and both of them identical. So pretty odd, not really sure what's going on there. But my thought is someone needed to have more clearance. So they, ha they basically cut the side off or the bottom there hammered it up and then left it. Well, the stupid thing in doing that, you can, uh, uh, like this is loose here, but you can unbolt those two bolts and two there, and this thing, you can see the pinholes, goes up or down. So I don't know why an idiot would spend all the time to cut this to do this when they could have literally just lifted it right here. But hey, you know, maybe I'm smarter than the average bear. So our job today is gonna be to cut this off, I'm going to leave this, and then we're going to weld that on so it's nice and straight. So let's get into it. So this is a great job for all you aspiring welders out there. Because you know what? Welding in itself doesn't generally pay that well. You have to be able to fix stuff. That's where the money is. You know, especially when downtime costs money for someone, they pay more. And not that this is downtime. I mean, I'm just fixing this for the guy but you get what I'm saying. And we're gonna actually use uh, the Harbor Freight stick welder, and this job literally is gonna pay for that welder. So you could do very much the same, like buy a stick welder and if practice enough to where you can get good, and then you can do a job like this and the welder pays for itself, and you get your name out there, it's all good things, you can make money. So anyways, what I'm gonna do is cut it off right here and then we're going to buff up this whole thing and we're going to look at putting that up here just somehow and making this all kind of uh, work. I may have to cut or grind this back further because there's a little bit of a lip there. We'll figure it all out but let's start out by cutting here. Using a, I think these are like 15 bucks Diablo carbide blade on a cordless sawzall. You don't need expensive tools. If you don't got one of these, you could use an angle grinder for this too, but this is far easier. <clears throat> All right, next uh, order of business. He wants this tube to be capped off on both ends. So why do that? Well, it's welded up there where we can't access it easy. So what I'm gonna do now is I measured up the size of this for the cap and we're gonna cut this. And then I'm gonna use this one as a template and we're gonna cut three more after this. That way we have enough for all of them. And then we will prep this, weld them all on and then we'll get to welding that sucker on there. All right, so I got this prepped as good as it needs to be. We cut up our end caps. So what I'm gonna do, and I did clean this edge. I'm not really worried about the mill scale on the face. I'm gonna tack this up with 6010. I prefer to use 6010 attack because the 7018 is just a lot slower because of the silicon ball on the end of it. So I got my ground clamp up. Let's uh, start tacking. All right, so I switched to 532nd 7018, running 155 amps. 
and I'm just going to flow this out to where it looks halfway presentable. It doesn't have to be perfect, but we'll make it look decent. All right, so got all these up. I ground the starts. A couple of them were a little bit proud. Again, it's going on a tow truck. It's going to look better than 99% of the welds on this thing already. But, you know, attention to detail, a little bit of grinding on the stops will make it look better. You know, that's my thought on it anyways. So now what I need to do is buff off the edge that is going to get welded up there. So we got to kind of put it in place, see where we need to grind it clean, and then do it. All right, so now that I got a position where I want, everything's looking pretty good. I'm gonna tack the corners and then remove these clamps. That way I can run the 7018 on this and get a decent looking bead. Don't help if I put a fucking ground clamp on it, wouldn't it? All right, so I swapped over to 7018, running 160 amps with this 532nd rod. And I'm gonna run a pass right down here, hopefully not melt it back too bad. All right, so this welded pretty bad and the reason is there was a gap in there and I was feeding rod in. My arc gap started to get too long. It started throwing buckshot out there. I'm gonna get a brush and just wire brush this. I got it fused, but it doesn't look good. We'll fix that up pretty good and make it look better. And really goes to show that fit up matters. What I should have done is ran a bead on this to tighten up the gap and then welded it together. It would have been a lot better, but hey, I screwed up. It's time to fix it, we'll make it look decent. All right, so I got it wire brushed out pretty decent. Now what I'm gonna do is I reposition the camera and I reposition myself to where I can see a lot better. And that's one of the issues. I was kind of just trying to toss it in there without really seeing what the hell was going on. That was a mistake. So now that I can see better, I'm also well, I could remove this up here that's in my way, but I think I can do it without it. But now let's run some passes and make this better. There we go, that's a lot better. Now I'm gonna weld the front of it, so let's get repositioned. Apologize for the noise, they're mowing the lawn across the street. So you can see the gap in here. In order to weld this, I'm gonna run a bead probably with eighth inch down here 
and then I'm gonna tie the two in together. Or actually, you know what, I will use a 5 30 second rod. And I'm just gonna run a bead, close the gap, then try and weld it together. All right, well, I finished up that side and some of it I didn't film. Battery in my camera died, of course, but it was the same as this. Now, I thought that these suckers were a little bit out of level, but when I look at it in comparison to the ground they're fine, fine I didn't realize that the taillight assemblies on this are kind of bent down, and it doesn't help that these things are uh, for this... Uh, lift here that they're basically slanted so a kind of optical illusion but they're pretty much parallel to the ground which is fine i mean this functions as like a bumper on the rear i guess and it is adjustable for height so if he wants to raise it up he can not a big deal there so that'll work good as far as what we learned on this well i learned a couple things one um <laughs> over on this side a real bad problem with arc blow and just trying to fill in far too big of a gap and you're always better off welding like a bead or two and then trying to join it when you have that big of a gap instead of just trying to throw it in there. 6010 could have done it, but 7018 is not the rod that you wanna be using for that. So it just doesn't fill very well and you can't get the puddle to quench it. It takes too long to cool down. So that becomes a problem. The welds on this look pretty good. Um, over here, I'm, I could have done a lot better. For whatever reason, I was having a real hard issue running 532 rods on the horizontals. It just wanted to cut out. The rods I was using, I'll be honest, are a couple years old and I didn't have them in a rod oven. So that could be why, but when I switched to eighth inch rods, I had no issues running horizontal. They ran perfect, but they just did not seem to want to run with the 532s with the bigger rods. No idea on that, just kept cutting out or, you know, not even sticking a rod, it would just cut out. But yeah, so overall, job well done. I'm going to hit this with a coat of primer and some paint just to make it look a little bit better for longer and hopefully you learned something. I wanted to use a lot of like very basic tools. I could have got this done a lot faster had I busted out a torch and some other tools, but I know that not all you guys have it. And I wanted to make a job that was approachable for you at home if you have simple tools. Like, I mean, I did this with like $400 worth of tools and this job and the other job I did in the previous video would have paid for all of those tools and then some for you guys. So, you know, you don't be afraid of taking on jobs if you got the tools and the knowledge on how to do it. Like I said, could I have done better welds? Yeah, but this is never going to fail. Uh, it'll be more than adequate for what it is. And beyond that, I mean, it is what it is. So I'm happy with it. Hopefully you are too. And don't be afraid to go out there and make some money. That said, thanks.